To finish off the pump mechanism, I need to make the eccentric, the eccentric strap and the associated rod. As I have already fixed the wheels to the axles on the loco, I did consider making the eccentric in two parts, but on balance I decided it would be quicker and easier to remove and refit one of the wheels, which of course is one of the advantages of using Loctite. For the eccentric I start with this piece of inch and three quarter round mild steel bar, which after securing in the three jaw chuck, I face off. You'll notice I'm using a high speed steel tool for this, whereas I swap this out for a carbide insert tool to bring down a section to the required diameter. I do generally get a much better finish on mild steel using high speed steel, unless I really load up the tool when using carbide. So to bring it down to the required diameter, I do just that and take some fairly hefty cuts. To cut the slot for the strap, I use a parting off blade but immediately run into problems with chatter. This is really annoying and although I don't show it in this video, I try various different parting off tools including a carbide tipped one, all to no avail. To get over the problem, I grind a form tool and drop the lathe speed right down, but even so the chatter is never far away. I end up having to do a bit of work with some memory cloth to get an acceptable finish. Given the amount of chatter I was getting just trying to cut the slot, there was no way I was going to part this off. So it was onto the bench and out with the hacksaw for a few minutes of aerobic exercise. Next it's back onto the lathe. In this funny looking arrangement here I've got three sections of square brass bar held into the recess on the eccentric with some electrical tape. This is just to hold the brass bar in place whilst I fit the whole lot into the chuck using some parallels in an attempt to set the eccentric square. My experience on setting parts accurately this way in the lathe is not good so at this stage near enough will do just fine and I'll come back to finish this face later. To cut the hole for the axle, I move on to the mill with the part clamped onto a couple of parallels with the downward face being the one I faced off at the start. After the last operation, I ended up with just over 0.1 mil variation in thickness, indicated that as expected, the part was not square in the chuck. I use the wiggler to find the center, working repeatedly across the X and then Y axes. And once I'm confident that I've found the center, I offset the Y axis accordingly and drill out the hole for the axle. To bring the hole to final size, I move on to using a boring bar. To check the dimension of the hole, I use a telescopic gauge. This one is from a decent Mitutoyo set that I have, but using these correctly really is a black art and for this hole I cannot get a consistent reading. However, lady luck is on my side this time because I actually managed to get the diameter just right. Not that it's so critical here. Whilst I've got the eccentric clamped in place and the x-axis zeroed, I take the opportunity to scribe a line across the y-axis. Using the line I just scribed, I position the eccentric in the vise and then find the back face and the centre using the wiggler before going on to drill and tap the hole for the clamping screw. To complete the eccentric, I need to bring it down to thickness by facing off the side that is not quite square. 
To do so, I make a simple mandrel and lock tight the eccentric in place. Once faced off, a bit of heat breaks the compound and other than a clean up, I'm done with this for now. For the eccentric strap, I have a casting that came with the pump body. This is going to be quite a complex part to machine, but first off, I need to clean it up with some files. I've removed the worst of the flashing and I have flattened off at least roughly one side. I've also scribed a line across the casting between the approximate midpoints on each side. I use this line to position the casting in the vise and clean up the face for the eccentric rod, although this is not yet to dimension, and also the two faces for the clamping bolts. The casting is only slightly oversized from side to side with plenty of material to remove from the centre. So I use the former to establish the centre and do so by using the wiggler to align to each edge. Before drilling the clamping holes, I do a visual check with a ruler and then get on and drill right the way through at 6BA tapping size and then halfway at 6BA clearance. Using the eccentric rod face as reference against a parallel in the vise, I reposition the strap and cut along the scribe line with a 1mm slitting saw. After splitting the strap, I realise I haven't yet tapped the holes for the clamping bolts, so I hold the relevant section in the vise on a parallel, establish the centres and tap through at 6BA. With the two parts now bolted together, I move on to the lathe. As I did with the eccentric, I roughly set the strap parallel with the chuck face using a pair of parallels, and then I centre it across the two sides and the centre join using the tool tip as a visual reference. Now it's just a case of boring out the centre to the diameter of the eccentric and then facing off. After checking with a go no go gauge, the final cut is just a spring cut and we can see the gauge goes in quite nicely. To face off, I measure the strap at its thickest point and remove half of what is required from this side so that the clamping bolt holes will be centered from one face to another. To face off the other side, I've made another mandrel. This one has a 26mm stub on the other side so I can hold it in a collet. And as I did the eccentric, I use a little Loctite to secure the strap and then face it off. And to remove the burr from the inside, I use a boring bar. For the remaining operations I move back onto the mill and I transfer the mandrel complete with the strap into a collet block held in the vise. I've already positioned the mandrel so that the eccentric rod face on the strap is at 90 degrees to the table surface. First I measure across the top and bottom faces. 
I'm looking for 54 mil across these. I clean up the top with a small cut, rotate the block through 180 degrees and apply the same cut on the other side. I then measure again and apply a finish cut to each side. I now know that the tool is 27mm from the centre of the mandrel and I use this to bring the eccentric rod face down to the required dimension. This face is meant to be 19mm across but the casting is under size so I cleaned up the ends to bring it down to 17.5mm. The eccentric rod will be held in place by two 8 8 bolts and as I've already established the centres with the edge finder off camera it's a simple job to drill and tap both. After removing the strap from the mandrel, I clamp it in the vise and drill out the oil feed hole. I've already established the centre between the faces and for the x-axis I use a drill to visually set its position before drilling part way through at 2.5mm and right through at 1mm. I'm not showing any video for it, but the strap was initially a very tight fit on the eccentric, so I used some fine grinding paste to lap them together. I have marked each part with a small centre punch, so that they can be reassembled in the same orientation as they were lapped. I did say at the beginning of this video that it will be quicker and easier for me to drop one of the wheels off the axle to fit the eccentric than it will be to make a split eccentric, which is still the case. However, to get a wheel set off the locomotive chassis does mean a complete strip down of the valve gear. I know I'm going to have to do that again at some point in the future, so I'll fit the eccentric and the pump at that time, not now. At just over 12 minutes this video is getting very long by my standards so I'm going to wrap it up here and say thanks for watching.